throwing that gear at Who gives this woman to this man? Her mother and I do. You may do so. Dear family and friends, we are gathered together in the sight of God to join this man and this woman in holy marriage. And what a joy and what a glorious day. And it's a joy to see all you friends and family here to cheer them on and support them through their many years together. The scriptures teach that marriage is a gift of God in creation in which a man and woman become one flesh that they might glorify God and enjoy him forever. That is the chief end of mankind. And it's also the chief end of marriage. It is God's purpose that as Garrett and Ellen give themselves to each other in love throughout their lives, that their union shall glorify God by reflecting that eternal and perfect union between Christ and his church. This is not simply a wedding service in recognition that our lives depend on God through Jesus Christ and in confidence that Garrett and Ellen are being established today as a covenant home. This is also a worship service. Let us then ask the Lord who is gladly present at the wedding in Cana, to bless us and bless them with his presence. Let's pray. God, our Father, we praise you for making and redeeming us to live together in love. We thank you for the love and trust which bring Garrett and Ellen today to be united to each other in marriage. Would you favor them with your presence at their wedding, but then particularly throughout their marriage? Unite them by your spirit so that together they may reflect the love of Christ for his church. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Go ahead, Garrett, try. <laughs> it would be interesting. Garrett and Ellen, the bond of marriage was instituted by God himself at the very dawn of history. This is no man-made custom. It is God who created both Adam and Eve, and brought them together in a holy bond of love. From God's own mouth, we learn that it is not good that the man should be alone. It was God's own promise to make a helper suitable for him. As the scriptures say, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. This is a very solemn occasion. It's very joyful, but very solemn as well, because you're about to make solemn vows before God and all these witnesses that you will love one another until death do you part. You'll take those vows before this God, and that God himself takes promises very seriously. What a joy to know that the God of promise promises you the strength you need to live out your vows. God created this bond of marriage that you may give each other uh, to each other 
you know, as you may give yourselves to each other in companionship, help and comfort in good times and in bad. That your affection for one another might say something of God and his love for his people. That's magnificent. That children of God should give may be raised and nurtured in love. And that human society may stand on a firm foundation all to the glory of our covenant God. Understand, understanding then the purpose of marriage according to the scriptures, I'd like to ask you if, you're, if it still is your intent to do so. Garrett, say I do or yes or absolutely, <laughs> something like that. I do. Very good, yeah. Ellen. Wonderful. <laughs> then uh, let's keep going. Otherwise, we'd have to cheat and I don't know. That'd be odd. Uh, Ellen and Garrett asked if I would speak on the text of 1 Corinthians. It's a passage about love. And uh, love is all over the place. Uh, you guys will make some vows in a few minutes that you're going to love one another. Um, I can't remember exactly how it says it, but basically forever until your life ends. You're, as you give your rings, they're going to be a, uh, you'll be saying they're a symbol of my constant faithfulness and my steadfast love. What is this love we're talking about? That's a great question. I'm not going to make you answer it on the spot. Um, but maybe I'll speak to it myself just a little bit. What is this love that um, we're talking about, what people so often do talk about? What are you going to be promising? Does it mean you're going to stay uh, fallen in love? Does it mean you're going to maintain a feeling toward one another? Does it mean you're going to love uh, Garrett like you love running, or you're going to love Ellen like I think it was you who loved the early mornings? Um, is that right? Other eh. way around. All right. Oops. Got that trivia thing wrong last night. Well, what we're talking about here is, is love that, in, in the text we're about to read, is an other-centered love. It focuses not first on self, but on the other. In the words of one fellow, this is a quality of others concerned, uh, others centered concern that looks to the genuine needs and welfare of a person beyond oneself. So when this text says love, you're, you're thinking not first of what I need, what I want, what I desire, but how can I have an other centered love? And Ellen the same way. And that's really for each of us here this morning a good reminder this afternoon, a good reminder of looking toward others. So as you listen to this text, you're going to notice a couple things. I'm about to read it. I haven't forgotten. You're going to notice that this uh, word love is personified. It's like it's actually doing the action. Well, here, love is patient. Well, it's love is like a person acting patiently. That's how you ought to hear it. And Paul um, is speaking to a, a bunch of people who are almost the opposite of this text. I'll spare you that whole section, but they're, they're not kind, and they're not patient. And you would expect Paul to say to them, stop that, would you just grow up? But he doesn't. Instead, he holds up a picture, a portrait of this love personified. And he's doing that on purpose, because what he wants you today particularly to think of is how you've been loved by the Lord Jesus this way. Love is kind. Jesus has been kind to you. Love is patient. He's been patient with you, and so on. Because, Garrett and Ellen, God calls you to love one another as Jesus has loved you. So let me read that text for a minute. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It's not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing but rejoices with truth. Love bears all things. Love believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. When you hear that, I suspect each of you would say, I would love to be loved that way. And that's exactly right. For a spouse to act patiently when uh, you've just spoken a little too sharply, what a blessing that would be. What a kindness. What a way to build relationship. Or when, when your spouse speaks kindly, when you've got the morning grumpies, or you've been kind of snippy or snappy. Again, that's the kind of love we would love people to love us with. No one wants the, the relational coldness caused by half of the things in the list there of a love insisting on its own way. It's like putting somebody up against the wall. Do it my way, and, and they're going to make you pay. There's a relational brokenness that comes from that sort of, I can't even call it love. Irritability. Or uh, 
Getting revenge is another way to say that. Um, that doesn't produce love. Resentment and being irritable, they produce isolation, provocation, and complication. But think for just a second, how, how, how easy is it to love like this text? Well, to bear all things. It's like throwing a blanket over the weaknesses or the faults of the other. That's a high call. To believe all things. That doesn't mean be gullible. But to think the best and not assume motives. How many of us would say, you know what, I'm guilty of doing that, even today? So how how does this kind of love endure? It's a high call. When when, um, you asked for this text, I read it like, wow, that's going to knock them flat. Because... Who can love like this? A little bit, sometimes, and sometimes we have great moments and then we, we, we fall into impatience, irritability, that sort of thing again. How can you commit to love each other with this biblical love? How are you going to do it? That's really what's beneath our text. Well, one of the helps in this text is seeing that Jesus is personified here. Uh, he's the template. He's the example by which you are to love one another. So, so keep looking to him. Maybe that's homework number one. Keep looking to Jesus. But furthermore, or more than that, not only do you have Jesus' example, but but you know that Jesus has loved you this way. He alone ultimately satisfies your heart's longing. All of us want to be loved like this, but we can't fill that that love, passion, or, or hunger completely in somebody else. But if Jesus loves you, which he does, You both profess faith in him. Then your core desire is satisfied so that even you don't don't have to get that love from your new wife or from your new husband. You don't have to put a choke on love me this way or I'm going to blow up because you've already been loved and are loved that richly by Christ. But the key, the key is to remember how Jesus loved you. Jesus loved you to the uttermost, dying in your place, for all of your faults and failings, sins and shortcomings, all of your lacks of love. I'm not going to ask your families for proofs of that, uh, but we all know none of us have loved even our parents like we ought, right? But he died on the cross in your place for all of our unloved. That's that other-centered love. He paid the price so that you'd be forgiven and know his love. That is the source. That is the power to love this way. I, you're saying this to yourself, right? I have been loved radically and completely and lavishly and undeservedly by God himself in the Lord Jesus Christ simply because he chose me. Let me then glorify him by loving like he's loved me. Let me love Ellen. Let me love Garrett even when they're less than stellar moments. Let me love selflessly because Jesus has loved me to that degree. And when you fail, you know the reality of forgiveness. And you'd be foolish to make these vows without the ability to forgive. And when you remember Jesus' forgiveness for you, that massive, massive debt, you can look at one another and say, I choose to take that on the chin. I choose to overlook. And actually, I forgive. I'm not going to bring it back up. Because he's forgiven me that massive debt. I'll forgive you this little debt. So Ellen and Garrett, step into marriage. I should say, go run into marriage with This commitment to grow in loving one another, according to this text, by the grace of God, with Jesus giving you strength, as Jesus has loved you by his grace and power. I'd like to ask you now to uh, join right hands. Did you figure out your right hands? Little ring swapperoo. Very good. And as you're about to make your vows, I would like to just commit this time before the Lord. Most holy and most merciful Father, at the same time, God of nature, of grace, creator, preserver, and redeemer of mankind, fill Garrett and Ellen, your servants, with a sense of the solemnity of the vows they're about to make, and then the joy of the state they'll enter into when they make them. May they look to you for assistance and enter into these sacred obligations in humble dependence on your enabling grace. Grant this, Father, with the forgiveness of our sins, through Jesus Christ, your Son, in the power of the Spirit. Amen.
Spirit, I'd like you to make your vows before the Lord and all these witnesses if you would repeat your vow after me. I, Garrett Joseph Kennedy. I, Garrett Joseph Kennedy. Take you, Ellen Ruth Sokash. Take you, Ellen Ruth Sokash. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. I do promise and covenant. I do promise and covenant. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful husband. To be your loving and faithful husband. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Amen. And Ellen, would you make your vows before the Lord to Garrett before these witnesses? I, Ellen Ruth Sokash. I, Ellen Ruth Sokash. Take you, Garrett Joseph Kennedy. Take you, Garrett Joseph Kennedy. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. And I do promise and covenant. And I do promise and covenant. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful wife. To be your loving and faithful wife. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Amen. Can we have the rings, please, sir? Yeah, that's fine. We trust him. <laughs> Garrett, would you uh, repeat after me as you exchange rings? Got the right one? Here, you want me to hold it for a minute? You get it? Excellent. Ellen, with this ring. Ellen, with this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. I take you as my wife. I take thee as my wife. Accept it as a symbol. Accept it as a symbol. Of my constant faithfulness and abiding love. Of my constant faithfulness and abiding love. Knuckles don't oh. come off. Yeah. <laughs> Garrett, with this ring. Garrett, with this ring. I be wed. I be wed. I take you as my husband. I take you as my husband. Accept it as a symbol. Accept it as a symbol. Of my constant faithfulness and abiding love. Of my constant faithfulness and abiding love. Father in heaven, we praise you for binding your children to Christ, the true bridegroom, the great shepherd of the sheep, that we might be his bride. And would you now give Ellen and Garrett the grace and ability to fulfill these vows? Make that relationship between Christ and the church the template for Garrett and Ellen. Bind them together in that first Corinthians kind of love, your love, Lord Jesus, that they might prosper spiritually under your care. Move Garrett to lead Ellen with grace with tenderness, with kindness, that he might picture Christ to her. Give him strength to persevere in loving and serving her well. Move Ellen to willingly support and respect Garrett, to love and serve him with joy and gladness in a way that magnifies your name. Use this marriage to draw them closer to you, to strengthen your church, and to bring glory to your name. Amen. By virtue of the authority committed to me as a minister of the Church of Jesus Christ, I now pronounce you, Garrett and Ellen, husband and wife, according to the ordinance of God and the law of the state, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What God has joined together, let no man separate. You may kiss your wife. The Lord our God fill you with his grace and grant that you may live long together in all godliness and holiness. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great joy to present to you for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. Garrett and Ellen Kennedy.